Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hodder. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning, chairs, community members. Uh, my name is Jose Gonzalez. I'm the founder of Latino Outdoors. And I'm here to just share a few um, key thoughts that connect a lot of what we've been talking about here. We're talking about the physical infrastructure of the parks, the natural resources conservation, and of course, the partnership where I'd like to focus on the social infrastructure. Uh, we've mentioned that a lot because I think when we talk about partnerships in the communities we serve and work with, Again, it should be no surprise. We're talking about the demographics of California, right? And what does that mean in terms of building the, on the conservation success that we've had in the past and in terms of engaging the new demographics? Big portion, which is me. It's the Latino communities. Uh, urban, millennial, Latinos and Latinas, for example. And what does that whole diversity of Latino com communities mean and look like in California from the Imperial Valley, L.A., Central Valley, all the way up to Humboldt, right? Present everywhere, and I think... Um, key stakeholder that they're ready to engage and be supportive. The key question is that we're talking about partnerships is that there already is a social infrastructure that's a national partnership in a lot of what we've been talking about, education, health, um, redefining what parks are, but not in, in a way that takes it away from like what, how parks should be enjoyed and valued. When we talk about health, for example, uh, with Latino Outdoors, we've been working on setting up uh, nature health walks in the Central Valley. Not because it's a radical new kind of thing that needs to just be, wow, it's new. It's what the needs are and matters for the community. We're just highlighting how parks are a natural platform for that. And I think as we demonstrate, we've heard a lot here is that those are natural convening and partnership opportunities. And then the last piece, though, really is when we talk about this is that uh, idea that parks matter to everybody. It's parks aren't any different to most communities in how they want to engage with open spaces. But it's important to keep pointing out how these are, you know, we have a phrase of parks for everything, parks for everyone. We've got a park for that in terms of recreation. We've got a park for that in terms of health. We've got a park for that in terms of education opportunities. These are social spaces. So it's tuning in to the way in which these are social spaces culturally and how they resonate for different communities because that's a natural engaging point. And I think that's really what's going to make a difference in how we move forward. And when we talk about partnerships and community building is to make sure that all of our stories are elevated. So, you know, the phrase, if we're not at the table, we don't want to be on the table as the menu items. So it's important for me to be here as a, a voice for the community, but not the voice. And we want to make sure that that question of equity and access, not just in our spaces, but in the decision-making process, is that it's sought out and welcome, not just that there's an open invitation, but there's an equitable going for and trying to bring us into it. Thank you. Uh, that, that was beautifully said. Uh, Mr. Doyle. Thank you very much. Um, I have submitted my uh, testimony uh, for the record, so I will highlight just areas um, based on the uh, the crunch of time here. Uh, my name is Robert Doyle. I'm the general manager of the East Bay Regional Park District and co-chair of State Park Partners. Is a co and it's a coalition of public agencies throughout the state that uh, run state parks or parts of state parks in partnership with the department. Um, those partnerships tend to be urban areas, um, highly diverse, heavily used parks, and uh, they are expensive parks to operate. Um, our agency alone spends $5 million a year operating the state park assets that we manage. Um, but what I really want to emphasize is infrastructure. A broken park is a non-performing asset. It's that just like in a business model. So if somebody goes to that park, the visitor experiences a locked ba bathroom, a pile of garbage, a broken rail on a trail that it's not, that it's fenced off and you can't use it. Those are non-performing assets. And if you can imagine the, the last 13 years, um, there has not been a traditional state park bond. The people using those parks in the last 13 years are young people. There are young families. There are new families to California. They are people of families of great diverse culture and diverse background. And their experience has not been, to say the least, very good. Um, many, many of the state parks, historical sites are closed. Many of the facilities are broken, including just basic water, restrooms, etc. But infrastructure is not rocket science. Um, it takes maintenance people and it takes somebody to do the job with a hammer and a nail uh, and be able to do this work. And unfortunately, that has continued to decline over, over a decade of uh, lower and lower budget 
So you can imagine the internal morale of the staff, but also the visitor experience. So even a tourist coming to California the first time, going along the coast and seeing that there's a chain across a park that isn't, isn't specifically closed, but to their purpose it's closed. They can walk over the chain, but the restroom's not maintained, the park's not maintained because there has not been funding. So when we talk about partnerships, our park district, for example, has managed state parks for 50 years. So we have some experience in doing that. And when you emphasize the need of urban outreach and, and outreach to young and new populations of California, you have partners who already have programmatically that ability that could be expanded in partnership with state parks. There are certainly areas that do not have state parks, particularly inner city. But there are agencies like uh, L.A. County who manage state parks who are there that with funding through a park bond, they could expand that same service in in partnership with the state park system. We have a, a huge uh, reservoir in Livermore that we operate for the state park. That system was built in the 60s. The water system is broken. It will cost three million dollars to just fix the water system that serves 400,000 Californians a year for recreation. So that infrastructure is really critical now more than it ever was. I absolutely support the work of Parks Forward, the work of the transformation team. But without funding, without additional staff and staff training, and without infrastructure being improved, I'm afraid that a lot of these initiatives cannot be implemented because there's no money there to do it. So finally, um, I just would like to say jobs. Uh, one of the things that has not been discussed a lot is the incredible amount of youth jobs first-time jobs, summer jobs, college jobs that parks and recreation agencies, including state parks, provide to young Californians. For many of them, it's the first job they've ever had, the first paycheck they've ever earned. They've learned a skill. Uh, this could be the California Conservation Corps. This could be uh, any number of local civic corps, but just lifeguards, seasonal workers, laborers that work in parks. That takes money. But what an opportunity for green jobs. What an opportunity for young people to earn a skill and then relate their entire family, bringing home a paycheck, mom and dad being proud of their first job. This all helps lift California, and it helps lift rec parks and recreation in the health communities. So one final thing I just want to mention, because it was raised by several uh, of the Joint Committee members today, is health. Uh, we have an excellent relationship with Kaiser and the East Bay. They are sponsoring outreach, including pres park prescriptions at Children's Hospital and in other facilities uh, of other agencies. So that really is an important thing that does expand. But the emphasis I'm making today is the need for infrastructure improvement, basic maintenance in the parks, and for that partnership to be realized that those partnerships can expand the efficiency and role of state parks without building a new park without creating a whole new infrastructure to maintain by expanding the, by scaling up the ability programmatically, access to parks, and to well-maintained parks. So I hope you'll take this seriously. We've had 150 years of the greatest park system in the United States, and it really needs attention. It needs funding. It needs a transformation committee. And I thank everybody for this very important time. We need to move forward and repair our parks and partnership with all the partners, both private and public. Thank you. Thank you. We really, uh, you know, ended with a strong panel, and I really uh, appreciate your presentations this morning. Uh, do any of the members have any comments uh, at this point? Mr. Mathis. First off, Robert, spot on. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we've 150 years, and we're letting our infrastructure fail us. And it's not just in the parks. It's statewide. I mean, it goes into roads, water, power grades, you name it. Um, huge thing, and we need to work on it. The fixed budget thing, I mean, it's there, there's so many different things that need to get done. And I love seeing you guys all come together and focus forward and develop. Um, Jose, the, this work you're doing is phenomenal. And all, all of you, it, it's great seeing this, seeing it come together. One of my biggest things is, you know, I, I spent – two deployments in Iraq and I came home in 08 and it's kind of like what happened to California and I love seeing people come together and work together to build it back I really appreciate your work thank you 
I, I have a question for uh, for Mr. Gonzalez. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the Parks Now Coalition. You talked a little bit about ensuring that you've got a seat at the table rather than being on the table. Right. It sounds to me like you built the table. Um, so t talk to me a little bit about that and how that's going. Right now, it'd be my pleasure. Uh, you know, it's we use that phrase because it's crucially important. The decisions get made all the time, and it's 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 hard. It's strenuous to want to make sure that we uh, not just force our, our way onto a table, so to speak, but respect who's there and work with them. I can attest to that. I've now had the pleasure of all the organizations here. We've been connecting with with them in some way, working with California State Parks Foundation uh, with a couple of work on messaging, interviewing, and so forth. Save the Redwood League, same thing as well. Uh, we've been attending some of the East Bay Regional Parks, um, Healthy Parks, Healthy People uh, outings that we've had out there and working with their staff there. So that's crucially important because the work that we're trying to stress is not exclusive, which I think sometimes gets misinterpreted, right? Like, get out of the way. We need to be present, too. It's really crucial about saying, how is this, how is this an inclusive starting point for a lot of communities who, who've, you know, because they haven't been present, We've built a narrative that their voices don't matter as much or they have to wait. And so the work that we're doing, I use stor the um, uh, storytelling as a platform a lot because it's important to assert certain narratives of how the, the, how the culture is value added to this work and that it makes this better and stronger while also trying to dispel some myths and narratives about how, in my specific example, Latino communities care about or access state parks and open spaces. So it's a really a, meant to stress as a joint effort, and that's really the push that I want to have. And I stress equity a lot because it's that question of what we bring to the table has value, and we want to work with partners that recognize that and want to help us help them. Um, and so that's the, the most crucial part. It is hard. We do need a lot of resources. We do need a lot of support. But we're trying to say we're here, and we want to be here to help. Can you can you talk about those sort of stereotypes as they relate to parks so we can better understand them and then also uh, get your thoughts on what the most significant barriers to greater engagement with the Latino community and the state park system are? Yeah, certainly. So one of the stereotypes may be that Latinos just don't care about parks. Right? They don't, they may not, the reason they're not present in many state parks is because there is no engagement, there is no concern, there's no care. So that's a stereotype, and that's just not true. You can look at several park bone measures and see how the Latino communities have supported that. It's just a question of not taking that support for granted. They want to be able to see, just like all communities, re results. If we want to vote for a park bond, what does that look like in our communities? And not because we just want to see it in our communities. It's because they understand that it's a public good. And a lot of Latino communities really understand that. That's why they support schools so much. That's why there's an investment in health, because it's that idea that how are we supporting a public good? Not only that, but like there's such high utilization. I, I don't know. I, I was funny when I, I wasn't expecting that answer, maybe partly because all my experiences in urban parks on a weekend have been seeing how filled they are with Latino families picnicking, Absolutely. playing, etc. And that's certainly in your, you know, I, I went to, you know, I know Berkeley well, and I've been throughout all the East Bay Regional Parks, you know, Tapia Park and down in L.A. So I, I'm interested in right. hearing that that's a stereotype. No, and, and it is because you'll see a story about how, you know, if I'll, I'll paraphrase it, minorities don't go hiking, right? It stresses this a narrative that we're supposed to, right? <laughs> exactly. So it's that question of we are present, and we do. Maybe you're just not aware of it. You haven't paid attention. You haven't looked. You haven't seen what are models of success and maybe how they can be scaled up. Um, and then the last question is about, you know, another stereotype is what is the definition of how Latino communities want to engage with parks? So if we say, well, we just need more picnic tables because we want to have a large family gathering, we don't want that to be a limiting definition. We want to make sure that that access is there, but then that's an opportunity for engagement for other park activities and support. Once communities are there, you know, we take them out to a park, and then the next question is, how do we support and care for this? What else is there here? Um, one of my favorite stories is, is having uh, an outing in Caswell Memorial State Park, right, right in the Central Valley. Beautiful riparian ecosystem. So we don't want to just go out there to recreate. We took the families out on the trail. And my favorite, one of my favorite experiences was hearing from, one, from a dad share with us identifying a lot of the plants uh, in the area because he's a landscaper, 
So, na you know, natural naturalist, right? <laughs> but that's, it was an invitation to have him share that so he has ownership and, and, you know, connection to that, rather than, let me just take you out to the park and educate you about what's here, mm -hmm. instead of, like, s listening and seeing, well, what value-added information do you already have that we can learn from as well? Excellent presentations, and uh, thank you for being engaged and continuing that engagement uh, through very difficult years that we've had, and hopefully very positive years uh, with your participation to come. Uh, at this point uh, this morning, we will move to public comment. There is a microphone at the front of the room uh, for you to, uh, to speak in. Um, there will hopefully be, uh, I, I would expect, some great public comment. I'd like to provide for two minutes of pub public comment for each participant. Um, and please be mindful that there are other people behind you that would also like to speak. So be mindful of that time. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine Phillips with Sierra Club California. I just want to, um, we followed the uh, Parks Forward process pretty closely. Uh, they've come out with a great report. It was a great task force. Uh, we appreciate the emphasis on access, increasing access, increasing relevance of parks, emphasis on innovation, planning to deal with the um, operational issues, uh, the emphasis on collaboration. We have three areas, though, that we think could deserve some continuing oversight by your committees. And that includes the um, appropriate, appropriate management and funding of management of the natural lands. That's something that tends to get lost. Um, and uh, while there's the expectation that the Natural Resources Agency and that the parks will appropriately manage the lands, we want to make sure that there is some oversight. Because as the park system has um, you know, been in dire financial straits, sometimes best management of those wildlands has, has not been uh, at the top of the agenda. Um, another thing is that the Parks Forward Commission's proposal for uh, a new entity, an independent entity, there's, there's a lot of positive to see in that, but some of the things that we worry a bit about is how to ensure that it's transparent, how to ensure that there is some oversight, and to ensure that it supports the best practices for managing and operating parklands. Um, there is a, a there is an effort through the Parks Forward movement to um, uh, appropriately transform some of the um, the collaborative and, and, and approach within the organization, within the system, and, and that's fine. But how do you make sure that if you have a park superintendent, for instance, who disagrees with with this third entity, that that park superintendent isn't uh, ripped from their job in order to allow that third entity to accept donations. And then finally, as has already been mentioned um, substantially, but I think needs to be underscored, funding. There's going to have to be some uh, more and more stable funding, sustainable funding in the future. In the next two years, I think it would be the best thing that you guys could do is make sure that the park system has the funding it needs to implement its its uh, transition. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Phillips. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Carolyn Christian, and I am the president of the California League of Park Associations. We represent the 89 cooperating associations, the nonprofit partners of state parks. And I also have the privilege of privilege of serving as the uh, president of the Friends of Pio Pico. We're a small nonprofit in Los Angeles area and raised over $80,000 to keep our park open a few years ago. All of our organizations have been very instrumental in keeping our parks open uh, during the closure crisis. And I mention this because uh, uh, we've been loyal park partners and very instrumental in preventing the closures and in some cases have been uh, around for decades. We are really excited about the findings and the recommendations of the Parks Forward Commission, but we are concerned that the report doesn't go far enough in calling for the expansion of the current park partners. And we also have asked and will continue to ask why vital park partners are not at the table for the transformation team that has been tasked with rebuilding and transforming the California State Park uh, System. Granted, we've been asked for input, but we maintain that is not for, uh, enough. As a cultural anthropologist, I see two reasons behind the current trend to relegate the vital park partners to an advisory role limited to giving input, but not part of the transformation process itself. 
And unfortunately, in this context, I don't have enough time to go through all the details, so I will submit um, extensive um, comments in writing, but um, let me just go over two of them briefly. Um, first, for far too long, we've been accustomed to a culture of scarcity that has led us to believe and, behaves, uh, and behave in ways detrimental to truly transforming our system and achieving excellence once again in our state park system. It has led us to behave in insular ways out of fear rather than embracing partnership and collaboration. The Parks Forward report outlines a fab fabulous roadmap for moving forward, but our culture of scarcity holds us back. Secondly, in view, um, the park system itself is uh, more complex, I think, than people realize. The uh, department is often used synonymously with the California State Park uh, System, but the reality is that the state park system is much more than the department. It is a complex uh, cultural and subcultural spheres that are interconnected, interrelated, interdependent, and overlapping in intricate ways, each with their own symbolic system. Thank, thank you very much for your comment, and please do submit them, and thanks for the new definition of brief. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Ricardo Ramirez, and uh, I had the pleasure of working for the California Department of Parks and Recreation as Assistant Director of Policy and Public Involvement uh, during the second term of the Brown Administration. Um, <clears throat> my, I dedicated myself to the issues of accessibility uh, with respect to underserved and uh, underrepresented populations. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let me tell you, that was a lonely ex uh, existence uh, so many, many years ago. Um, today, I'm happy that the commission has said that these issues are no longer making trouble for the department. Uh, I ended up, ended, up, ended up being a troublemaker uh, as, as a result of creating some real challenges for the department with respect to reaching out to, to these populations. I'm not unhappy about that. Uh, Things like that do happen. <clears throat> um, I have several comments, but when I look at the transition team, team, I see essentially the way parks look. They're essentially white and with a little color here and there. If we look about the <clears throat> this uh, setting here, this is the way parks look. So we have a lot of work to do. The other thing we found out about, excuse me, <clears throat> found out about the commission was that the future of parks and the sustainability of parks is going to depend on uh, people of color. And uh, I hear that people speak to <clears throat> these population groups as future and evolving populations. Folks, it's already here. It's 50 percent plus. Don't think of these folks as evolving. They are here. <clears throat> and you need to engage them uh, tomorrow or earlier this afternoon. Um, the history of, of Mexican history, uh, Mexican American history in California, is now almost non existent. So, that uh, if you want to embrace the Latino community, really embrace them at an emotional level, you need to speak to our history. And our state historical parks do not speak uh, eloquently or inclusive of our history. So, that's another area where you can reach out. It. Thank you very much, sir, for your, your points. Well taken. Thank you. I'm Jeff Hedin. I'm a member of Team Standish, which is keeping Standish Hickey um, State Recreation Area open. And I'm a board member of the Mendocino Area Parks Association, which has been the sponsoring agency for that work. And I would like to address really two factors. The first one is that this transition period of two years and um, a second uh, period of 10 years is going to need um, a lot of freedom for the people in senior management in state parks to think things through. I think that those areas where we have um, a contract with some outfit like Team Standish to keep a park open should be easily rolled over for a three-year period so that this commission and uh, the uh, management in state parks has freedom to really go to work on how to reorganize and don't have to be bogged down in the long negotiations to uh, redo these contracts. We spent three months working out the details of a contract. 
we shouldn't have to do that again. Let's just roll them over for three years, give the two-year period a chance to um, happen, and the new team to come in and see functioning parks where these um, elements are happening. The second one is that the most successful thing for our um, use uh, or our management of the park was the $10 million matching funds program. This should be somehow rolled over. The result of this was philanthropic or philanthropic uh, uh, gifts to the park on the level of skilled labor uh, meant that we have managed to rebuild all the fences, replumb all of the bathrooms, put in new toilets. We've even managed to pave all of the roads that go through the park. Now, roads were left out of the um, commission's report as an element in the park. We spent $119,000 of your money um, from the park system to repaving the roads in Standish Hickey. Uh, it's made a huge difference in terms of the amount of uh, dust, et cetera, in the park. Mr. Hedin, thank you very much for your work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. One other thing. Question. Please work with the um, county uh, departments of um, health and human services. Get them voucher systems so they can get their people back in the parks. Thank you. Sir, please follow up with my office. Thank you. Hello, my name is Thomas Stratton. I'm here representing uh, Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park as a cooperating association, former statewide president with Friends of Allensworth, and also the California League of Park Associations. A couple things I heard today that I just wanted to uh, say it, it as a cooperating association uh, member kind of rings uh, a true with me is uh, access. I think we spoke a little bit about uh, rail access to some of our parks in Southern California. I can also echo that for Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. Rail access would be uh, something to definitely shore up. And also cultural resource management. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, natural resources is very much uh, front and center uh, in our state uh, park system and something we treasure. But those cultural resources, I think, are, are definitely something I think that can be reinforced as we go forward. That's something that we have there at uh, Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. And, and I think a component that we can continue to develop and expand. I appreciate the, uh, the academic input uh, that, that I've seen uh, so far and uh, look forward to really kind of uh, integrating our, our not only our public system of education but higher ed into our state park system thank you uh, mr. Stratton yeah thank you thanks for your comments and also for your work on uh, for Colonel Allensworth I recently was at Angel Island where a chapel that he was at was uh, is still there and it was exciting to me after learning about Colonel Allensworth that he had history relating to uh, in the Bay Area um, and it's a history that uh, more people should should know about we, we are in public comment, but Mr. Mathis, did you want to say something? Yes, yeah, no, I, I'm glad to see you constituate up here and taking part in The Voice. I'd love to hear more, and again, please follow up with the office so we can talk yes, sir. in the future. Thank you both. I, are, anyone else would like to speak in public comment? Thank you um, for those of you that, uh, that did participate in public comment. We had a, a great hearing. I want to thank all of the folks who provided testimony this is uh, something that millions of people across California are paying attention to. There are park lovers in, in every corner of California, and uh, the legislature uh, is certainly is paying attention. I want to thank as well my co-chair for today, Senator Pavley, and, uh, and for her members who also participated. Um, we uh, were engaged, and hopefully we'll have some good things and, uh, to report as we pay attention in the coming years. Thank you.